Hi, I'm Daniel. You're watching Unrivaled Investing. Normally on this channel, I like to cover individual company analysis. However, every month or so, folks ask me, Daniel, what's going on with the macro? What's going on with the broader stock market? What are my thoughts? And so in this video, I'm going to share some of my latest thoughts. Hopefully they're helpful for you. If you enjoy educational investment videos, please make point of hitting that thumbs up hit that subscribe button. A lot of questions asked around, you know, is this potentially the end of the bull market that we've seen so far, or at least the bounce that we've seen since the end of last year. So let's go into what we've seen so far. You know, one key data point that is for the bulls is the idea that inflation has been slaughtered. And you can see that it has gone from around 10% to closer to two to 3% now. Well, you know, well below the prior peak, but still above what I think the Federal Reserve would want longer term, which is closer to that 2%. That said, you are seeing some Federal Reserve, you know, whisperers uh, from the Wall Street Journal talking about how, you know, overall, the central bank, the Federal Reserve is likely to pause further rate increases. So that does further help sort of the bull cause saying, hey, there won't be further tightening that does help the economy that does help valuations. That said, today, you are looking at inflation accelerating, coming in a little bit hotter than folks were expecting, partly because of higher gasoline prices. And you can see the breakdown of what drove the month over month change in inflation, and it was 0.6% increase. And gasoline and fuel were the key drivers, you know, 10%, 9%, then airline fare. Well, airline fare, a large component of that is underlying, you know, fuel costs. So you're looking at these things fuel it seems like you're having a real supply dynamic it's yes a strong economy but in order to get this cost under control you're going to need to have a lot more either switch to green energy or more likely just making more oil you know producing more oil and if you don't do that producing more gas you could have a period potentially unless the economy starts slowing down where you're looking at a painful impact from higher fuel costs. Uh, that said, you were, you, you know, you did see some deflation in things like used cars and dairy products, fruit, fruit and vegetables. But overall, this increase in gasoline prices really does impact a lot of users, a lot of, you know, drivers. And looking at the, you know, the underlying data, overall inflation uptick, um, but the core, which is the figure that the Federal Reserve is primarily looking at, continues to head in the right direction. That said, once again, still above that 2% level that I think they would be comfortable with to say, hey, mission accomplished. They're still in the we're waiting and seeing, you know, we have raised rates significantly, but now we probably, you know, maybe we pause for September. Maybe we, sub top, you know, we pause until later this year to figure out what we want to do. Now, looking at other indicators in the economy, you know, one investor here from Charles Schwab calling out how, you know, the employment figures, you know, you've seen a slight uptick in unemployment and now looking at small business employment, they're talking about job openings that are hard to fill have continued to fall. Now, overall, still as a, you know, what you've seen is a change on a percentage basis that you know, this Liz Ann Saunders is saying is now consistent only with recessions going back in history. So seeing this change in the number of job openings that are hard to fill for small businesses suggests, you know, you're having a tougher economic period that hasn't really fully penetrated in the economy. You know, you look at the only prior times that you saw this percentage change in this hard to fill job openings for small businesses was prior recessions highlighted in, in red here. So, you know, you you might have some early indicators saying, hey, there, there will be tough you know, pressure ahead. And the question is, is that priced into the market? You know, you do have some folks saying, hey, maybe they'll cut rates and then, you know, all will be well. You look at the underlying price action and oftentimes price actually leads fundamentals in some cases. That's which is a really interesting dynamic over a multi-decade perspective where you will see something change. And this this even happened during, you know, like World War II and the Battle of the Pacific, where you saw, you know, stock prices start to recover before you saw the U.S. start, you know, the, the turnaround, you know, let's say with Japan. So you you do see these dynamics where oftentimes price 
anticipates leads fundamental changes. And so let's let's look at some of the trends that we're seeing with the breadth of the market. You know, it's it's one thing to say, hey, the market has done well very, you know, this year. But what are the underlying pieces? You know, what what are, what are the ingredients in this pie doing? Looking at the sectors that are above a 200 day moving average. So thinking about like this past year, is it higher or lower? And most of them are higher with the strongest one being energy. But overall, it's only about 52%. So I wouldn't say this is mega bull territory because when you see a long and sustainable bull, bull market, you have a lot of the ingredients saying, hey, it's well above where it was a year ago, well above, let's say, where it was 50 days ago. And that's the next component. So looking at it broadly, a lot of things are just on the edge, you know, slightly above financials, just on the edge at 50%. Tech, strong as well. You know, that, that's the second highest beyond energy. And a lot of folks know that with, you know, companies like NVIDIA just absolutely rallying, ripping. But you want to look at the full pie, all the ingredients that are in it. You see other things like utilities, consumer staples. These are generally, you know, get bit up with things when you're more worried about a recession. So it's not surprising, you know, to see that it hasn't gotten really bit up. And also with higher interest rates, it's less appealing to get sort of this steady, you know, rate where you might say, hey, wait a second, this utilities yielding, you know, 5% and I can get 5% on cash. Why would I want to own that? So it's not surprising to see that utilities and consumer staples also weak. So then you shorten that perspective from 200 day to 50 day. And now you're actually looking at a period where most stocks are down looking at relative to a 50 day moving average, except for energy. So this does reinforce this idea that most of these sectors are below where they were on a 50 day moving average. And this could suggest that the bull market is going to struggle to continue to rip higher from here. And a lot of folks have said, you know what, Daniel, you know, I've been overly pessimistic. Uh, you know, you'll, you'll make new highs in the future. And I think looking at this does make someone say, hey, you know what, it does make it less likely that you're going to see new highs for the market. And that's, you know, looking at the broad number of sectors, the different index, you know, the different key categories and whether or not they're actually really participating. And, you know, looking at this suggests that really the only one that is showing funda possibly fundamental strength driven, you know, at first by price saying, hey, you know, there, there might be legs here is actually energy with everything else, at least 50 percent of which under the 50 day moving average. So that's an interesting data point. OK, so where do we go from here? First of all, in full disclosure, this is not financial advice. Also, quick plug at Unrivaled Investing. My goal is to help everyday investors by identifying companies with compelling long term business prospects, attractive valuations and aligned management teams. I'm looking for companies that I can partner with and hold for years with the prospect of hundreds of percent upside. I share my investment journey in a weekly letter at unrivaledinvesting.com if you'd like to learn more. So, you know, what is the market pricing in? What do I think about the market from here? I think it's worthwhile to take a step back and, you know, look at where we are from a fiscal debt perspective, because this actually is going to play a very large role in terms of how things can play out in the future. You know, it's very clear based on the debt to GDP that there is a serious lack of leadership in Washington in the United States that really refuses to tackle the profligate spending and the concern of like, hey, let's just kick the can down the road versus actually say, hey, is this efficient spending? And so you're seeing this translate into, you know, greater amounts of debt. And then challengingly, with cash and treasuries yielding four or five percent, I personally keep my cash at Interactive Broker, see the link below you'll see the government interest expense is going to explode, explode higher. And that's only going to make the situation even harder because then you're going to have situations with, you know, like corporate bonds and corporate issuers saying, hey, we need to refinance our debt. But the U.S. government has to issue so much trillions upon trillions of dollars in debt to re just refinance their debt. You're going to have this challenge of, wait a second, why should I lend fi at 5% for these corporations? You know, maybe it should be six, seven, eight percent, just like you've seen in the in the mortgage market where U.S. mortgages have really caused like a freeze where you don't have people looking to sell their homes because they're locked in at a two to three percent mortgage. And they're saying, wait a second, it wouldn't be worthwhile for me to switch to an 8% mortgage. And that's the reason why some of the home builders have actually done well is because they've been the only seller in this market. 
you know, everyone else that's locked in, they're saying, I don't want to do it. So you have a complete, you know, freeze in that market. And will that ultimately follow through into the corporate market as well? Because looking at the deficit spending and keep in mind, this is the projection from the Congressional Budget Office. So this is presumably going to be more you know, favorable than reality. Uh, they're still expecting the budget you know, deficit on a per year basis to, you know, on a as a percentage of GDP to continue to get worse, you know, from 5% plus to, you know, nearly 10% in the coming years versus a multi-decade average of closer to a 3% deficit as a percentage of GDP. So I, I just view this as out of control and it's going to be very, very hard to nail that landing of 2% inflation when you have this amount of spending just trillions upon trillions of dollars from the government. And so you really have two different paths, one of which is that they don't nail the landing. Inflation starts to pick up a bit and you see things you see it in early spaces like in energy, in which case the Federal Reserve is forced to tighten again. And then people really start panicking and you see much lower valuations. I'd say a retest of the low last year, maybe even lower. Um, or you have a situation where you know, the the Federal Reserve or excuse me, the, the central government says, you know, Congress, the White House says, look, we got to get this under control. And what we're going to do is cut back now. Whoa, you know, real leadership. Wow, that would be amazing. Um, but I don't think you're going to see that. Uh, I don't think you're going to see that from either party at this point. It, you know, people don't want to talk about things like entitlements that are just going bananas and will be bankrupt, you know, in the next decade or so. So, you're, you know, I'm looking at this. I'm looking at this, you know, this chart, you know, and I'm thinking to myself, if they were to bring this back to, let's say, you know, an average of closer to 3%, go from, you know, 6% to 3% in a given year, that would be a huge headache on the economy. I mean, for perspective, the great financial crisis, you know, the the really tough recession, everyone thought, you know, hey, this could become a depression type of situation. That GDP decline was around 4%. So if the US government just has to pull back their deficit spending, because they're saying, hey, this is you know what, this is getting a little bit out of control. We're not even talking about a balanced budget, just to go from, you know, let's say 6% to 3% would be in the same ballpark as a great financial crisis in terms of impact on the economy. Because, you know, the government's effectively one of the largest buyers of goods and services in the economy. And so you if they were to pull back to this degree to buy about three percent just to close their deficit, not even close it all the way, just, you know, cut it in half, you'd have a huge impact on the economy. So I don't view this. And, and then, by the way, you look at U.S. equities priced around 20 times earnings. You have cash once again, five percent, and it just makes cash more compelling. So how am I personally investing right now? So. I think the universal themes stay the same. And that's that is really important to understand. I will cover, you know, macro calls, but the uni you know, the universal themes of what I'm looking for. I'm looking for businesses that provide a critical good or a service. So even if the US government has to cut back, it's a critical good or service. You're not gonna be cutting on this. This is something that should do okay or better in a tough economy. Another aspect is a strong balance sheet when everyone else has to worry about refinancing with higher interest rates. You know, I want someone that's, hey, even benefiting from higher interest rates. Maybe they have a net cash balance sheet. You know, a lot of my top holdings have net cash balance. Uh, secular tailwind. So there's even a strong secular driver, even if you're looking at headwinds like this, like, you know, with the government, Say, you know what, because the set, because the demand is so strong, maybe you're offering a good or service, maybe you're unrivaled and it's very clear you're taking market share each year. Also, maybe, you, you know, consider an international, you know, flavor, different companies on an international spectrum that, you know, are, aren't going to be in the same sort of step with, let's say, the U.S. market. So that is another aspect of, you know, another key component is thinking about fair valuation. Am I getting at least a fair or compelling valuation? So those are just some of the thoughts that I personally consider for my own, you know, investment journey. And I'm sure there are other dynamics that you consider as well. But to, to wonder, is the bull market dead, you know, you know, or do we make new highs? I personally am in the camp that we saw just such tremendous froth, you know, in the last few years that it'll just be so difficult to see really new highs get made. So I, I would I, I would be surprised if we're seeing new highs, let's say, in six months from now, relative to where we were, 
you know, over the last you know year or two. Now you are starting to see some IPOs start coming to market and that does reflect, hey, there's demand. So let's let's push the supply. Let's issue new stock. So you're going to see some very well tailored IPOs. You know, I've talked about the arm IPO where they're going to try to limit the float to make it really sexy and the stock price is going to go to the moon. So you're going to see that type of Wall Street shenanigans play up to get the animal spirits going. But broadly, I still think you have a lot of these headwinds that investors should be aware of and that, you know, you should consider for your own investment journey, making sure you're paying a fair or compelling valuation and that you have these dynamics that I already talked about, like a strong balance sheet, strong secular growth. Uh, and I'd love to hear your comments below if you feel like I'm missing the mark. You know, the, the truth is I I want to be aware of the macro and that's why I'm doing this these videos. But most of my journey is focused on the bottoms up, you know, individual companies where this type of, you know, development, it's it's not going to determine, you know, what am I doing where it's, hey, I'm still focusing on that quality and that critical services type of business. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If so, please make a point of hitting that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. You're watching Unrivaled Investing. Thanks so much.